Okay, so let's talk about how to get customers and people into the system now. So we already kind of went over this, but let's review it. There are three different types of entities in the system, companies, company contacts, and individual accounts. Companies are pretty self-explanatory. This is like ABC cabinets. This is a company. Company contacts work for companies. Companies pay the bills. Company contacts work for companies. Individuals are people, much like company contacts. They're people, but they pay their own bills. So this is like John Doe that just walks in off the street. He's not with a company, but he's paying his own bill. So when we think about getting these entities into the system, there are a couple ways to do this. There's the manual way, or you can import. So you probably have a spreadsheet or another system that has a list of all your companies. And if you do, then the quickest way to get your companies into the system is to import them. Let me show you though how you can do this manually. So first of all, companies, company contacts, individuals, they can create their own accounts. So if we log out, this site has public ordering on, so you're seeing this. And in this case, the create account button is over here. If you want this off, then there would be a big picture and a create account button below. So let's go create account. Okay, so this is what it might look like if your company had public ordering turned off. So first of all, there'll be faced with this decision. Is it a personal account or a business account? So this is really what determines if they are an individual or a company and a company contact. If they hit personal, then they are an individual account. So this account is for them, but they're not a company. If they hit business, then it's going to create a company and a company contact to go inside of that company. So I'm not going to go through each of these. They're pretty self-explanatory. You can see that the person just fills out their account information, chooses a username and password, agrees to the terms and conditions, and submits. Once they do, they have, in this case, created a company and a company contact. In this case, they've created an individual account. So let's log in and get back to where we were. So if you need to create an account manually within the system, you can come up here to view all or add new for each of these. So let's go add new. It's just gonna bring up the same type of information, except you can do this on the back end. Everything's pretty self-explanatory. Let's go over, however, a couple things. Role. Is this company a customer, a vendor, or other? This will help the system know when to display this company and how to act in certain situations around the site. We already touched on this earlier, but let's go over this again. Input units. Is this company going to be inputting in Imperial or metric? Because again, the system can convert. So you can have customers ordering metric and your shop on Imperial and it'll do the conversion in between. So how does this company operate? You can activate or deactivate a customer. These settings override the default site settings. So if you remember, we set up financial settings to be for the whole site, but these can now override those so that each customer can have their own settings. So if for the most part, you have people paying before they process, but you really trust this guy, you can set this to override. I'm not gonna go over these settings again because they're the same as the financial settings globally. They just override at the customer level. And again, this is pretty self-explanatory information. So filling out this information and hitting submit would save this as a customer in the system. And that's how you manually input a company, a company contact, or an individual. Now, if we're dealing with a company contact, you can see that you need to assign them a company or add one before you start. The rest of this is pretty self-explanatory. But here is where you allow this user to log in. Because companies can't log in, company contacts can. So by checking this button, you get the user account inputs. You can give them a username and either generate a password or assign a password and save. Okay, so that's how you do it manually. So now let's look at how to do this a faster way all in mass with importing. So if you come up to settings and import, you'll see an import data page. So the first thing I would do is download these templates, company, contact, and individuals. And what these are is they'll help you get a good idea of the format that all Moxie would like. So if you have any control over it to make this import as easy as possible, try to match up these fields. And these are just all the fields you saw before when we are creating manually. And this is the order that our system likes them in. Now you don't have to do this. There is an option to match these up in a second, but this is handy to know what the system is looking for. So as you prep your file, keep this in mind. Now that you've downloaded that and have looked at those, let's go ahead and actually do one. So let's say that I have this list of customers from some other system and I'm ready to pull it in. So I'm going to go companies, choose my file and submit. Now I can tell it to ignore the first row. And in this case, I definitely want to do that because my first row is just labels. And then you just match up the fields from your sheet over here with the fields in our system. So you 
you just go down through. You don't have to match it up. In this case, we don't have a company ID, so it's as simple as this, so on and so forth. So fill these out and hit submit. You'll see a notification telling you how many successful imports there were, and you can even undo it, but this is your one chance to undo it. Okay, now that we've got some companies in there, let's do some company contacts. And you can see that this works much the same. I can just choose my file, and in this case, I have a send welcome email for all valid co contacts. So any, any company contact that actually imports it can send a welcome email to them. So you'll need to be strategic about this. Are you ready to send out an email welcoming all these people to your system? Or would you rather just import them and tell them in a different fashion? In this case, we're definitely going to turn this off. Okay, so you see that we have much the same as we did. We can ignore the first row, and then we're just matching up fields. Notice that the can log in in our system needs from your system a 1 or a 0, meaning yes or no. So in theory, you could create a whole bunch of company contacts that all had zeros, and you could set this so that it pulls them in, but they cannot log in, or the opposite. And let's go ahead and send submit. So there are a couple different strategies you can use for putting people into your system, and it kind of depends on your launch strategy and also your company history. If you're starting a new business, then it's obviously wise just to leave the system as it is and let people create their accounts on their own. You can send them marketing material and send them links to the site, but allow them to create their own accounts. If you're an existing business with lots of different customers and are ready to launch all at once, then you can import the companies and company contacts and allow them to log in. Also send sending them an email welcoming them. You'll need to consider your company, your history, your company contacts, your companies, the state that they are in, and figure out what best suits your needs. No matter what that is, go ahead right now, create some companies, company contacts, and individuals. Get them in the system and use this as an opportunity to get some beta customers experiencing the site.